Hey, what is happening everybody out there? It's your man Jake James Lugo here. So I'm back from PAX East 2018. I had a great time over up in Boston. I got to see a lot of my great friends, you know, both in the industry and out of the industry, and got to meet a lot of you guys that were hanging around on the showroom floor. I had a great time also playing all the interesting games, both indie and AAA stuff, that was shown out at PAX East 2018, as well as all the other little appointments that I had while visiting some of the biggest publishers that were in attendance. But on top of that, I also want to give a big shout out to a lot of my friends over in the Key Keepers. That includes HMK, Suralum One, and the Gamers Join, and a couple of our other friends that we met up with throughout the course of the weekend. The reason why I want to give them such a big shout out is because not only did I stay with them throughout the entirety of PAX East 2018, we got the same hotel and stuff, but also we had a great time just hanging around checking out all the games all over the place and in addition to that I want to give them also a big shout out for announcing recently that they're gonna be one of the first groups of people to play Kingdom Hearts 3 in the coming months I can't wait to hear more about what they're gonna be doing out there it's very exciting for them they're doing some big things over there so if you can I'll keep links in the description box below go show them some love go show them some owl hugs when you can do so but also I want to give also a big shout out over to IGN because if you guys didn't know and I'll have links in the description box below I made a cameo appearance in one of the recent IGN videos from PAX East 2018. One of the things I got to talk about was Soul Calibur 6. I was actually at the Bandai booth. I was able to demo the game and play with some of the characters. But in addition to that, IGN had asked me to do a reaction to some of the stuff that I saw about Soul Calibur 6. If you haven't seen the video, again, I'll have some footage here for you guys to check out. But there will also be links in the description box below so you guys can see my whole appearance on the IGN PAX East fan reaction video. If you can, go leave them some comments. Let them know that your boy is on that video. Show them some love if you guys can. But regardless, though, let's talk about PAX East itself. I mean, how was the weekend overall? What exactly did I see and what exactly did I experience? Well, like I mentioned before, I got to play a ton of games. I got to check out some stuff from Square Enix. I got to check out some stuff from 505 Games, Bandai Namco, and a ton of indie developers that were in attendance throughout the entirety of the show. As well as also, I got some swag, which I'll show you guys in just a bit. But a couple of the games I want to mention that I want to give special shout outs to that not only had some interesting stuff to show everybody at the convention, but also some of my personal favorites when I was actually demoing them. The biggest one I have to give a shout out to, which has been getting a lot of traction from everybody, is The Messenger from Sabotage Studio. Now, if you don't know what The Messenger is, it's kind of like a big nod and homage to the Ninja Gaiden series. It has also an homage to a bunch of the 8-bit and 16-bit platformers and action games of that era. It has this whole kind of gimmick where you're able to change the aesthetic and change the levels from the 8-bit style visuals to the 16-bit style visuals. But in addition to that, it also changes up the music, some of the different patterns of the enemies, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I thought was really freaking cool. It also has a real fun tongue-in-cheek humor that's very self-aware and kind of plays on the bit that it's kind of a big kind of nod to Ninja Gaiden on the NES and as well as also some of those other games and it's just fun to play overall. So big shout out to the guys over at Sabotage Games. In addition to that, let's talk about Square Enix. I saw two main games there while I had my Square Enix appointment. I got to see Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, and also Final Fantasy XV Windows Edition. Now, I can't really talk much about what's going on with Dragon Quest XI other than what's already been put out there with the trailers and stuff, but I will say that the presentation that I got about Dragon Quest XI was really freaking cool. I wish that I was able to show you guys some gameplay, so maybe I'll put some like actual shots of the trailer and stuff, but overall, Dragon Quest XI is looking really good, and we're getting some interesting stuff that the Japanese release of that game didn't have. But besides that, Final Fantasy XV Windows Edition looks phenomenal, still looks like a gorgeous game, especially in 4K. One of the other things that was also announced throughout the entirety of the show, specifically at the panel for Final Fantasy XV, was some of the actual content we're going to be getting for Season 2 of the DLC. We're getting some more, uh, was it, story-based DLC uh, content, which I think is great. I wasn't a fan of the Comrades DLC with Final Fantasy XV. Maybe I'll do an actual review of that game sometime in the nearby future. But I'm glad we're going to get some more clarification and more story and plot details about some of the characters we really didn't get a lot of info about throughout uh, Final Fantasy XV's main story. So definitely, again, I'm really excited about that stuff. I can't wait to check it out both for the Coalition and on my own spare time here for the YouTube channel. I think they're doing a lot of crazy stuff, and they also had some other stuff on the showroom floor at the Square Enix booth. I was able to try out the Biako challenge for Final Fantasy XIV. However, we kind of failed miserably because we couldn't get our team together to actually defeat Biako, and I couldn't get the shirt, but either way, I was happy to actually have played the game. They also had some other stuff on there. They had the Dissidia mobile game as well as also Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition, which I thought was cool, but I really didn't spend a lot of time with those games because again, they're mobile titles and they're kind of a little bit of an offshoot, offshoot of Final Fantasy 15, but I understood like why they were there for. Besides that though, let's talk about some of the other indie games that I saw out there. I got a chance to play some games over at Devolver Digital, including, uh, what is it? I want to say the game is called Swords of Ditto. 
I believe it's called, but it's kind of like a Legend of Zelda slash Adventure Time style game that has a little bit of elements, you know, involving a roguelike, which I thought was pretty damn cool. Besides that game to go, though, there was also a game called Blazing Chrome, which is very reminiscent of Contra and uh, Metal Slug. If you love that style of action platform, if you just like the whole bullet hell and just destroying enemies that are coming at you, that is definitely your style of game that you're really going to get a kick out of. Besides that, I also had a chance to check out uh, Dan and Gary Games for Super Daryl Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4. Now, Super Daryl Deluxe is going to be probably the next game that I do a video review here on the channel. I'm actually in the process of doing that, but I was only able to do that for the PlayStation version of the game, and I was hoping to have the Nintendo Switch version to take with me on the trip, but they weren't able to get codes for that ready in time, so I was able to at least play the Nintendo Switch version at their booth. The game is very similar to the PS4 version, but I'll have a lot more to say about that in the coming days when I actually do my video review, both uh, here on the actual YouTube channel and a written review over on thecoalition.com. Now, let's talk a little bit about Soul Calibur 6. Now, again, I mentioned the IGN video that I appeared on there, but to kind of give you guys some thoughts about Soul Calibur 6 and what I thought about the game when I actually played it, I really love the aesthetic of Soul Calibur 6. It just looks visually beautiful. Again, it's much like the previous games, but this one is on a whole nother level. The camera is kind of brought back a little bit, so not only can you see the full kind of, you know, fight going on between the two fighters, but also see more of the background that's all over the place. It's a very shiny game, and I only got to play with a select few characters, including Killick, Mitsurugi, Sophia, as well as also the new characters that they included in the demo at the PAX East booth. I can't wait to play more of that game. I feel like Bandai Namco is going to do a lot of special stuff with it, especially if they're taking a lot of cues from Tekken 7 and also Injustice 2. They had a lot of great single-player content that everybody really enjoyed. Now, they had some other games at the Bandai Namco booth that I really didn't get to mess around with. They had uh, the Naruto Shinobi Strikers game there, as well as also Code Vein, but I wasn't able to play those games because the lines were just too ridiculously long. One of the things about PAX East is that the lines could get pretty damn long, it, like especially in some of the more popular booths that are at the show. But either way, though, I was actually able to see some of the gameplay from a distance, and from what I saw there, things looked pretty cool. I wasn't too much of a fan of Naruto Shinobi Strikers, but I will say that Code Vein is looking very beautiful. Now, of course, I have to mention, because I've talked about this on social media, I did an interview with Suda51, who is the creator of the No More Heroes franchise, and I got to talk with him about his newest game from Grasshopper Studios, uh, Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. This game is on the Nintendo Switch, and I got to demo one level of the actual game, and so far, I'm really digging it, but I still wanted to see more. I really wanted to see another style of gameplay that they were going to implement into this game, and I told that to Suda himself, and talked a little bit about why exactly he decided to kind of change up the formula from the previous two. To no More Heroes games. If you guys want to see the full interview, it will be linked in the description box below. Again, it's really fun, but yet it's still short but very sweet. And we get into a couple of the details about why No More Heroes Travis Strikes Again is so different from the previous No More Heroes games. Now, besides that, of course, there was some other stuff that happened outside of the convention center, which I thought was pretty fun. I was able to go to a couple parties, specifically the Bethesda fan event. Now, if you guys don't know what this is, basically Bethesda hosts this big event where they have a bunch of their games that they get to show off to the public, as well as the press and other influencers that are attending PAX East. While I was there, I was actually able to play Castle Wolfenstein 2, or the new Wolfenstein, the new Colossus game, on the Nintendo Switch. To me, Wolfenstein 2 on the Switch is pretty damn cool. It runs beautifully at kind of almost a smooth 30 frames per second, I want to say, but it still looks great compared to its other console counterparts, and it still plays phenomenal as well. In addition to that, I also got to play Quake Champions. Now, if you guys don't know, I love Quake. I used to do LAN parties back in college and have a lot of fun playing Quake back in the day. But with this one, they not only showed off the new Instagim mode, which they're kind of bringing back from previous Quake games, but they also announced a couple other champions that a lot of people are really going to love and really going to dig. Now, don't get me wrong, I got my ass whooped in all these matches, but I was still fragging people here and there and really showing off my skills in Quake. So I had a lot of fun while I was there playing with everybody. And in addition to that, they were giving away some free swag for everybody that was playing some of the games that were there and giving us all free food and drinks. So definitely appreciate it here and there. As well as also, besides that, I was able to go to a couple other parties, including the Acers Predator Gaming Party, which I had a lot of fun with. I got to see some of my old uh, close friends from throughout the gaming industry and also see a couple other stuff and people playing Overwatch there, which I thought was pretty damn dope. Outside of that, however, there wasn't really much else that I was doing outside of PAX East itself. There were some other events that I wanted to go to, including a Final Fantasy XV concert that I really wanted to go to, but scheduling conflicts really kind of prevented that from happening, and I was really disappointed about that. Hopefully, when I go to E3 this year in June, I'll be able to check out some of the other concerts there without kind of, you know, conflicting with some of the events that I have to go to for E3 itself, because I love going to gaming concerts. I went to the Kingdom Hearts Orchestra concert that was back last year in June during E3 time, and I 
had an absolute blast. It was something that was amazing. I love the music of some of these games. And again, coming from Square Enix, their music and their soundtracks and all their you know compositions are phenomenal to me. And I just love listening to them, especially with a full symphony orchestra. So there you go, that was some of the stuff that I did at PAX East 2018, but let's talk about some of the swag that I actually got. Let me show you guys some of the different stuff that I got here. Again, this is the VIP badge that I got while I was at the Acer's Predator Party, Predator Gaming Party. Pretty damn fun. And also, they were giving away these free lanyards for everybody that went to PAX East, no matter what badge that you got. They have a little Final Fantasy XIV uh, thing on there. So they got Moogles and they got Chocobos. So what better else thing is there to love about that? They got Moogles, son. They got Moogles. But if we're talking more about Final Fantasy XIV, as well as also some other stuff going on with Square Enix, they were also giving away some other cool swag, including this foam sword, just for going by the booth. Now, this is for the Final Fantasy XIV, and they were really promoting the Biako Challenge, so I really appreciated them just getting this. I got like two or three of them. But they were also giving away some posters for not only Brave XVS, but Final Fantasy XIV Online. So, always appreciated getting some of the free random swag here and there. But the one that was giving away the most swag was at the Bethesda fan event. And I got not only these cool gloves, but also this scarf for playing Quake, as well as also this, uh, what is it, this Scully right here for the Elder Scrolls. So they were really going all out with some of the swag over at Bethesda, and I really appreciate it. I mean, look at this. You're going to have to put this on me, right? And you have to call me Hype Pastor Quake from now on. That's my new nickname, my new rap nickname, Hype Pastor Quake. I mean, look at this. I'm all Bethesda branded. I'm all ready to roll, son. It's all going down. And I'll tell you right now, don't mess with me with my Quake skills, because I'll go up in there and insta-give you in a heartbeat. I mean, look at this right here. This is how it's going down people this is what we're doing right now the other thing that I have to mention as far as swag from Bethesda was that they were also giving away these Castle Wolfenstein uh, card packs again these are just regular playing cards but they have a Wolfenstein 2 decal on the back of them uh, this was just for playing the Nintendo Switch version of Wolfenstein 2 which I really appreciated I tried to get more because I might be doing a giveaway for one of these you know in the upcoming uh, weeks and stuff but I was only able to kind of snag two but I really appreciate it thanks a lot Bethesda and then finally, I also want to show you guys again the PAX East Media Badge. Again, I always appreciate the badges. I have a collection of them for all the events that I go to, including my E3 badges and some of the other events that I go to, like PSX and stuff. So it's always cool collecting the badges. I always put like the different buttons from some of the booths that I go to, especially at PAX East because they always give different buttons and stuff. Uh, a couple of the ones that I got was from the Sabotage booth when I went to go play the Messenger, including a little fidget spinner that I was actually able to get just for playing the game. And that's really about it. Again, I got to see a lot of great people at PAX East this year. I got to meet a lot of YouTubers that I've followed their videos over the last couple years, and also just mutual friends from people that I've hung around with throughout the gaming industry ever since I've been part of it and ever since I've been working in it. Uh, if I met you out there at PAX East, if again, whether you're a YouTuber or a media person or just a regular fan that's just hanging around enjoying video games, I appreciate you. It was a blast. It was a lot of fun. And I hope to see you guys at more events. Big shout outs to the Key Keepers, HMK, Seralem1, uh, the Gamers Joint. Big shout out to my man Robert, the DCD. Uh, big shout out to my boys over at GameSpot. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are always a blast to meet up with. Uh, big shout out to all the PR people that I saw running around in the booths that, you know, hopefully I didn't make your job too ridiculously hard because I know how stressful that could be. And also big shout out to all the people that were showing off games out there. All the devs, the indie devs, AAA devs, all you guys out there that really make these games and put a lot of work into making great experiences. You guys help Help make things like this very possible and again I appreciate you and all of us appreciate you as well so with that being said that's what went down at PAX East this year again just big shots to everybody else that I met out there and hopefully you guys will be tuning into my YouTube channel because I'll be talking a little bit more about some of the other games that I got to see as well as also some new reviews that are coming very very soon don't forget to check out all the links that I put in the description box below I have a ton of stuff there including my IGN appearance uh, some of the stuff that I did also with the key keepers as well as also a couple other little little surprises here and there in addition to that, again, don't forget, I'm going to be doing some giveaways in the coming week or so. I told you guys a little while back that I'm going to start doing some of the giveaways right after PAX East, and I can't wait to reveal some more details about that. It's going to be interesting because I'm going to have some stuff not only here for the YouTube channel, but also for those who support me over on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, don't forget, I do have a Patreon page. Link's in the description box below or here on the sides and stuff. Uh, definitely support me over on Patreon. Support my content. Even at the $1 level, it's really appreciative. I give you guys a ton of content. I'm going to be bringing you guys some even more content over the next month or so, especially leading into E3. There's going to be a lot of exclusive stuff that goes up on there. And also, don't forget, with my Patreon, again, if you want more chances to win and to get some of the stuff that I'm doing on these giveaways, definitely support me on there because you guys will have more chances to get some more cool stuff. This is not 
not BS stuff, people. I want to stress that highly, you know, right claro and stuff. There's a lot of great things I'm trying to bring to you guys. Anyway, that's all I got for you in this vlog. I will be back again very soon with a brand new video review. Again, probably going to be Super Dower Deluxe and also maybe another game here and there. But I will talk to you guys again very soon. Peace out. Stay epic, everybody.